Hey, science, is it really you? I didn't recognise you without your white coat. Where are you off to? Oh, hello, society. Please do excuse me, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. I'm on my way to an international symposium in China. We're going to discuss the construction of a new particle accelerator. Another one? Didn't you set one up a little while ago in Geneva? The famous experiment in which the Earth was to disappear down a black hole. Except there wasn't really a black hole, was there? Nothing escapes you, does it, society? But you know, the black hole was the usual media hype. And remember, traffic to the Physics Institute's website broke all records at the time. Well, they will have been interested too, because it brought a lot of publicity. I remember reading an interview with that famous physicist. Oh, what's his name? You know what I mean, right? But tell me about this new accelerator. What's it for, exactly? What's it for? It's used for experiments with neutrons that help us to understand the nature of certain matter better, with extremely important theoretical implications and applications. Are you sure? Well, it's not exactly black or white. It's more grey. But why am I wasting my time explaining things to you? You don't listen to me. You don't understand me. You've never understood me. And you have a zero tolerance for risk and you don't want to know about uncertainties. We've known each other for 400 years and our relationship isn't getting any better. At least I have the courage to admit it. You're not really interested in me. And if you're honest, you're also a little bit afraid of me. Aren't you? Afraid? The reality is that I have to perform great human feats just to balance the books. I'd like to see you paying for health, education, social security. And it's not true that I don't spend money on research, because I do. I know, I know. But you must understand that the money you spend on me is money well spent. I bring innovation. Development, jobs, technology. Listen, society, just as an example, I've helped to reduce the number of human salmonella cases in the EU in the past five years by almost 50%. That's not nothing, you know. Years, research, experiments. Things are never quick and easy with you, are they, science? It's been more than 30 years since you told me you're about to find a cure for cancer. And more than 20 since you asked me for money to produce an AIDS vaccine. And where are the results? Do you think this is easy? Why don't we talk about the fact that every time I come up with an innovative proposal, you block it? I block it? When? What about GMOs? How are we going to feed our animals without access to GM soya? We cannot produce enough vegetable protein to feed our animals in Europe. Do you know that today the vast majority of the soya fed to animals is imported into the EU from the Americas? And that's because of you. Me? What do you mean? What have I got to do with this? Well, you want to buy chicken, pig and other meat at the lowest possible price. I can understand that, particularly in these times of economic crisis. But in this global market, our farmers are not competitive when it comes to producing plant protein for animal feed. So we import GM soya for our animals and cannot even grow it here in Europe because you block all the authorizations to cultivate GM crops in the EU. Even after we, scientists, have evaluated them and said that they are as safe as traditional crops. But surely there must be another alternative. You make it sound so... black and white. Oh, it's all so very complicated and difficult to understand. 
I've read stuff on the internet. What about... That old story of modified rice that not even pests will eat. Well, excuse me for saying so, but if the pests won't eat it, why should I? Well, you're the sensible one. Does that seem sensible to you? Try to understand what I'm saying. What if it turns out that GMOs destroy farming? Is farming to be handed over to multinational companies? And who's paying for this research anyway? What are their motivations? Think twice about it before you change what I eat. Science, have you really considered all the implications? Should it really be up to you to decide? And how can I have my say? Have I considered the implications? Society, please, with all the other things I have to do. And by the way, you're wrong. I'm not the one who decides about GMOs or any other technology for that matter. You're barking up the wrong tree there. Go and talk to a government if you have concerns about new technologies, but don't attack the scientific expert committees whose only concern is to assess whether they are safe. Our only aim is to protect you, animals and the environment. Yeah, right. You expect me to believe that? Have you ever told me that a GMO is not safe? Seems to me that all you care about is protecting industry. There you go again, as expected. When we do not find any risks related to a new product or new technology, then you say that science is sold out to industry. Meanwhile, scientists bend over backwards to uphold the highest standards of independent science, filling in all kinds of declarations of interest forms which are published on the internet. Our lives are laid out for all to see. And what about you? What are your interests? And who is funding you? Well, it's obvious. We're serving the public interest. Why should we need to declare anything? All we care about is protecting human and animal health and the environment. Everyone knows that. You always say there's no need to worry about innovation, chemicals, drugs. So let's talk about asbestos. You told me it was the safest material around, remember? You even had me using it in school buildings. And then it turned out that it was carcinogenic. You're quite right. But who discovered that asbestos is carcinogenic? I did. OK, OK, but... Oh, come on, enough. I've been listening to you two arguing for ages. It sounds like we all have the best intentions at heart. Isn't there a way we can accept our differences and work together? <laughs>